Slip Fence Gate Kit Instructions to Build a 6-Foot Vertical Gate Once you've completed your vertical slip fence, the last stage is to build and install your slip fence vertical gate. Materials needed but not included in the gate kit to build a standard 6-foot high by approximately 48-inch wide gate are two pieces of 2x4x8-foot lumber, two pieces of 2x4x10-foot lumber, three pieces of 5 8 by 5 and a half inch fence board for every 12-inch width of gate, a 100-pack of 2-inch deck screws. First, measure between the gate posts where the gate will swing, and this measurement less 1 and a quarter inches will be the width of the gate. For example, if the measurement between the two gate posts is 48 inches, then the width of the gate will be 46 and 3 quarters of an inch wide. Cut two pieces of 2x4 from one of the 2x4x8 footers to this width, and these will be the top and bottom rails for your gate frame. Then, cut the 2x4x8 foot board directly in half, and these two 48 inch pieces of 2x4 will be the side rails for the gate frame. On a flat surface, place the two 48 inch rails inside the top and bottom rails, creating a rectangle. Do not place the side rails outside the top and bottom rails or the gate will be too wide for the opening. Once the frame is laid out and the corners are square, use the L brackets and wood screws included in the kit to fasten the frame together. Make sure that all of the gussets on the brackets are all on the bottom flat surface. Use four brackets on the inside of the frame and two on the outside on the hinge side of the gate, making sure that the frame stays square as the screws are drilled in. After all the brackets have been fastened to the frame, this is where you would cut the cross member or stabilizing rail for the middle of the frame to hold the frame true and square. The cross member will be angled from the bottom hinge side to the top latch side of the gate. To cut the cross member, lay the rectangle frame flat on top of the remaining 2x4, so the 2x4 is angled properly from the bottom hinge side to the top latch side and mark the 2x4 on both ends to be cut to fit inside the frame. Cut the cross member to size and place it inside the frame on its correct angle. You may need to tap the ends with a rubber mallet to get the cross member to fit where the ends meet the bracket screw heads. Flip the frame over and fasten the cross member to the bracket gussets with the screws provided. Before fastening the hinges to the frame, flip the frame back over so the gussets are down and place the hinges on top of the frame snug up against the outside L brackets and fasten with wood screws provided. Make sure that the hinges and the swing of the gate are correct with the cross member and that the hinge cylinders are on the inside of the gate. Once the hinges have been fastened to the frame, you can now hang the gate frame onto the gate post with the self-drilling screws included in the hinge pack. The gate frame should be hung approximately 8 inches below the top of the other fence boards in the fence section next to the gate. Once in place, fasten the frame with the self-drilling screws through the hinges into the post. While the frame is hanging on the post, you can start cladding the outside frame with fence boards, starting with the two outside boards being flush with the frame, making sure the boards are level with the top of the fence sections on either side of the gate posts. When screwing boards in, ensure that the screws are level with the stringers on the flanking fence sections, so the rubber strap will hide them later. Once the outside of the gate has been boarded, the inside of the gate should be clad with the boards at the same top level, evenly overlapping the space between the boards on the outside of the gate, creating a shadow box pattern for the gate to match the rest of the vertical fence. The last board on the inside of the gate may need to be cut lengthwise to finish the edge of the gate. When both the front and the back of the gate have been fully boarded, this is when the gate latch should be installed. Gate latch installation instructions are included in the gate kit. To install the stringer straps, place one board horizontally level with the bottom of the top stringer in the section beside the gate and lightly screw into the gate with wood screws. This will provide the seat for the rubber strap that emulates the stringers to be installed on the gate. Next, seat one of the rubber straps onto this horizontal board and fasten the hinge end with two black wood screws provided. While pulling the strap slightly taut, proceed to fasten two screws in through the strap to each fence board in the same pattern, as they are in the rest of the fence, to emulate the boards fastened to the stringers of the vertical fence. Once you get to the end of the gate, finish with two screws on the end as you did at the beginning. Then, remove the horizontal board and take the strap around the end and continue on the opposite side of the fence, repeating the previous three steps, 
starting with leveling the horizontal board to act as the strap seat. Repeat this same procedure for the bottom stringer straps. Once all of the boards have been fastened, the center of the straps on the outside edge of the gate can be cut off. If you've opted for the cap rail, this is when it would be installed to the top of the finished gate. It fits snug and requires two self-drilling screws from the stringer kit on both sides to fasten to the top of the gate boards. Hinges can be adjusted to self-close or open by following the instructions included in the hinge bag. Taller vertical gates only require a taller frame and longer fence boards. Everything else remains the same. Build a better fence. Slip Fence by Tahoe Products Group.